Alright, so this is episode two of the Rage Fishing Steelhead Archive series. Now, if you missed episode one, what happened is I recently discovered an old hard drive that had a bunch of my first clips from 2013 through 2015. And you haven't seen any of them because it was before I had a public YouTube channel. Now, all these clips are filmed with this old camera, which is a GoPro Hero 2. It filmed only in 1080, which is high definition, but it's not the 4K that you're used to if you're watching my channel. Also, the audio quality is really bad on these old cameras because the camera is completely encased in plastic. So what I did in episode one, and I'll do it again here in episode two, is I'm gonna add some music, and I'm gonna do some voiceover to kind of explain what I'm doing as far as techniques go. So the theme of episode two is about the steelhead that got away, because what would steelheading be without them? At least when you're filming, you have some level of proof about the one that got away, instead of just an exaggerated story and a bent hook. But there's truly some fish in this video that those exaggerated stories are made of. However, those are the fish that keep us crazy steelheaders going back for more. So I hope you enjoy episode two, The Ones That Got Away. Here I'm fishing with my recently replaced G. Loomis float rod. If you watched episode one, you know I broke the first one. I had a Hawken 135 Nightmare jig tied on with a Phil Turbo Master float. This is the footage that makes us appreciate GoPro's newest image stabilization. No more Blair Witch Project footage. The hook bent out. This was before Hawkins switched to heavier wire hooks. Holy crap. In this clip, I'm fishing with my old G. Luma Steelhead Series 8'8 medium heavy casting rod with Shimano Corrado reel. I'm using a single size 12 Rocket Red Corky with no bait, scent, or yarn. Look at the size of that steelhead. This steelhead was truly the fish of stories. You can see in this clip its size and pure power. I ran to keep up with it as it was peeling line heading downriver. Just as I go out of sight, the fish runs towards the bank and breaks me off on a root wad. This is one steelhead I will never forget. There are a few fish that live in your memory. This is one of them. As I walk back up river licking my wounds, I snap my net lanyard to my chest pack. Well, I thought I did. Nope, as I swing it over my shoulder, it falls into the river and gets swept away. I tried to catch up to it, but no luck. So not only did I lose the fish, I lost my net as well. Back to fishing my float rod with Nightmare Jig and Turbo Master Float. I always thought that other side of the river looked good. Well, that was for good reason.
This is one of those times I started my camera after hooking up. This was a hot fish. Let's look at those jumps again. The steelhead got wrapped around a root wad. Here you can see me free spool some line in an attempt to get it free. No luck. It ran down river, further complicating things. I tried to wade out into the swift current to get a better angle on the root wad hanging up the line. I tried again with the use of my waiting staff. Still a dumb move, but I kind of lose my mind when it comes to steelhead. The steelhead finally broke the line. Alright, here we go. Start out close. Here I'm fishing a spinner with my old GL2 casting rod. <laughs> Look at those cat-like reflexes. Here I had hooked a steelhead on a nightmare jig. This was my second fish in this hole, so David decided to try for a double. The steelhead jumped and shook the hook. My rod was loaded with David directly in the jig's trajectory. I was following the buddy code. Always make sure they are okay before you start laughing. Well, that wraps up episode 2. Let me know if you want to see more archive footage in the comment field. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.